Intro music. <laughs> Come on in. A star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. James. Yes, Joey. In all the weeks of baseball, this was certainly one of them. Yeah. This uh this this was one of this ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the worst week of Padres baseball twenty twenty two. If you were looking for a happy cheerful podcast where two brothers talk about their favorite team may i recommend the brothers rockies yeah doug and cliff two nice guys can help you out <laughs> you know what they're totally named doug and cliff. <laughs> <laughs> if they existed they'd be named doug and cliff yeah <laughs> and the brothers mariners yeah you know they had a lot to talk about this week with a bunch of fighting yeah yeah the brothers marlins Sandy Alcantara's doing great. Yeah. I mean, there were plenty of brothers sports broadcast out there that will podcast that will be more cheerful. But unfortunately, the brothers Padres this week just they get the worst week of 2022. Yeah, that, it's, that's it's easy awful. to say. It's been very bad. Yeah. So let's burn through the recap very quickly because I don't know about you. But when I've been stabbed, I want <laughs> it to be healed as quickly as possible. Yep, yep. So game one, Thursday, June 23rd, the Padres lose 6-2. to two. Joe Musgrove coming off a COVID IL, missed a couple days, missed his regular start day, gave the worst start of the year. Six innings pitch, six on runs. It, it, yeah, so that was the game one. Game two, we actually won one to zero. Mackenzie Gore pitched his best pit game of the year. He went five innings, striking out four, not allowing a single run, was efficient, lasted all the way to the fifth inning. And this was also the first time in Major League Baseball history. The only run was driven in by a brother facing another brother, Austin Nola. Drove in the only run off his brother Aaron Nola, and we like brothers' content yep, here. Yep. And so that that was a cheerful news. It was great. Yeah. Game three of this week. Padres lose four to two. Blake Snell possibly had his best start up until the fifth inning. He was efficient. He was striking people out. He was he um but he hit Bryce Harper in the hand, broke his thumb, and then Bry Blake Snell was l visibly shaken and could not find the strike zone for the rest of the game. And we ended up giving up the lead and losing 4-2. to two. Now, I didn't know this until this happened. Did you know Blake Snell and Bryce Harper have been friends since they were 10 years old? I did not know that. So they were – Bryce Harper grew up in Vegas and Snell grew up in uh, Seattle – but they were a part of off-season travel ball little leagues. Oh, interesting! That's cool. And they were a part of like best of little leagues. And they've been right. friends since they were ten years old. So it, Blake Snell was visibly. You watch that inning after he hit Bryce Harper. He was visibly shaken that he just hit his friend. And it it it. Anyway, so we lost game four, last game of the series against the Phillies. We lost eight to five. <laughs> Hugh Darvish pitched a quality start. Six inning pitched, nine strikeouts, only allowing three runs. He left, and the seventh inning they gave the ball to Nabil Krismat, who has been lights out all year. Gave up three runs. Every pitcher gets a couple bad relievings, a couple bad days a week, a year. That just happens for. Even the best pitchers have one bad game, and the Bill Crismet had his bad game. Yeah, Garcia gave up a couple runs, and we ended up losing. And then we had a day off, finally. 
<laughs> and it was nice. And then Tuesday, this last Tuesday came around and we flew all the way to Arizona. The first game of this series, I've just simply put here, worst game of the year. <laughs> we lost seven to six. Shamanaya pitched six great innings. Shut out ball. He was at a hundred at ninety eight pitches. Bob Melvin let him go out for the seventh inning because they th- wanted to see if he could st- how he could stretch himself. Seems like it makes sense. We were ahead six by six runs. He did not have command. Quickly gave up three runs. Was taken out of the ball game. Garcia came out. Basically walked the bases loaded. Yep. Gave up two more runs. Now they bring out Rogers to close the game. And to get a six out save and his first battery he faces he hits in the foot and the running this tie and run comes in but miraculously out of some sort of voodoo magic we get out of it not giving up another run base loaded no outs there was a great double play where we went from the ball was hit we went home to first base it was great actually it was home to second oh to second yep it was great and then the ninth inning came around and I wrote right here, let Joey explain what happened. <sighs> do you want to recap the last one or do you want to just go? I, I, I might as well. Okay. This is a lot, a lot for me to explain. And I, and I, and this is not going to be the only time I'm going to mention this thing in this today's episode. So let me set the scene for you. Taylor Rogers gets two outs in the ninth. He then uh, allows two base runners. It's first and second. Bottom of ninth inning, tie baseball game, two outs. Taylor Rogers has yet to give up hard hit balls. They're just grounders or squib line drives over the infield. He induced a ground ball from Christian Walker to the right side of the infield. Right side of the infield is Eric Hosmer and Jake Cronenworth currently. Eric Hosmer runs out of position to feel the ground ball and he fields it. He, he dives and he's, he gets up on his knees. And at this point, the runner to tell Marte going first is booking it to second. Uh, the second, the guy on second, I forget his name. I think it's Josh Rojas. Josh Rojas is also booking it to home because two outs is what he's supposed to do. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, and Eric Cosmer in that moment decides I am going to get an out. I am going to end this to go to the 10th. So he gets up. He's in equidistant, I would say, between first and second, right? And Taylor Rogers is 10 feet ahead of the runner of the batter, Christian Walker, is about, is like about half a second away from, maybe a second away from being at first base, beating Christian Walker for the third out. But Eric Hosmer decides... I'm going to throw to second. So Eric Hosmer gets up, looks at second base, which is CJ Abrams was not at, nor was he close to it at the time. So he throws a bad throw over to second, hits Cattell Marte and bounces off the glove of CJ Abrams, who is there finally, because CJ Abrams started the play in left field. Because um, Christian Walker is a power hitter power hitter and he hits the crowd out of the ball so if he hits it to shortstop it will be a hard line ball uh, usually hit about 110 miles an hour that would give the shortstop a chance to get the ball and throw it to first so Eric Hosmer could have held on to the ball and allowed base loaded or thrown to first to try to get an out at first instead he throws the second a bad throw on a play that Cattell Marte beats already. And because it bounced off the glove and the runner was heading home, the winning run scores game over. Um, this, and I, I don't say this lightly, should never happen with a person that has won four gold gloves, supposedly. First, he fields out of position. He right? could have let the, 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 the obvious choice was 
let Jake Cronenworth make the and play. And go to first base and yeah. receive the ball. He feels out of position. And then second thing is, he just throws the second. You think that, you're, you think that the runner, like, Cattell Marte has had a head start already. It's two outs. He's running on contact on every swing he sees, right? And he's running a second. And you have Christian Walker, who's the slowest base runner on, on the diamond for the Diamondbacks. And you have Taylor Rogers, who's about to be at first base. And instead, he throws to an unoccupied second base, hoping that you know he'll beat this fast runner. It was so boneheaded. And it literally cost us the game. And it... I don't know how to say this. There, There is no way that Freddie Freeman, Paul Goldschmidt, Jose Abreu makes the same play. No, not at all. Jared Walsh, Carlos Santana, Ty France. They all make the right play, which is either don't make a play and force the runner to stand third or try to go to first. Instead of being playing out of position and throwing to second. And what makes me really mad, really mad, James, is all these people saying it's TJ Abrams' fault. It's no no, that, that does make me mad too. And several people I thought I respected said this as well. <laughs> it it wasn't when the ball was hit, he was further away from second base. Than Rogers was the first, yeah, and and C.J. Abrams, yeah, maybe if he booked it there, but Cattell Marte still beat the throw. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter if C.J. Abrams was sitting on first <laughs> base, second base when yeah. the play started. Yeah. Cattell Marte still beat the throw. Oh God! Just- so. Being up six nothing, Bob Melvin asking Manaya to pitch longer. Luis Garcia not having it, and then Eric Cosmer boneheaded. Just it was just like a trifecta of bad. It was yeah. Bob Melvin openly admits he should have not. He should have just kept Manaya out, but he talked to Manaya. Manaya wanted to stay in. But you know how is he not to guarantee? He was gonna he was gonna still use Luis Garcia in the eighth. Yeah. And Garcia, like Garcia, didn't get, did not get a single out. You know, so that would that have been different because Tim Hill came up and he gave up a run too, because he he was the first person to relieve Shaw Manaya. Yeah. Yeah. But know. it's just Ugh. yeah it 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 was the, it's the worst loss of it's if maybe if not maybe not the worst loss but it's the dumbest loss. Yeah. It no, was, it's the worst loss because. It made us look like we were amateurs. Yep. Yep. Anyways, <laughs> game six that <laughs> happened today, June Wednesday, June 29th, uh, or yesterday, if you listened to when the podcast comes out, we win four to nothing. Nice. Mike Clevenger, first quality start of the year has been a big problem for him, not being able to make it past the fifth. Six strong innings, six strikeouts. And Jake Cronenworth, who was 0 for 27 when this game started, got three hits and drove in two RBIs. So it was, if we hadn't have won the last game of this series of this <laughs> stretch, I think of when we would be way angrier. Yeah, yeah. It'd been pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can listen to our end of last year episode. This- the, the little preview would have been like, yeah. <laughs> so, so the week ended. None of us got it. We're not, I mean, f- two and four. That was the, yeah. At uh, that's unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah, we. we I I said five and one. I you said did. One. I said four and two. Yeah. I just was. That's my dyslexia. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, rearing its ugly head once again. Oh, oh my God. What? what an awful week. And yeah, just one of those things where we know why. 
uh, pitching just wasn't up to his usual excellent self, and the lineup was just not as deep as it was. And it was the end of a 31-game stretch without a break. Yep. And our guys looked a little tired. Our bullpen was tired. But still, every one of the guys will tell you that they should have done better. There was nothing... It, there was no, oh, that was a close game. It could have gone either way. Loss. No, we lost every game. Yeah. There was, there. I mean, the two games that we did win, but every other game, we lost it. We we were facing inferior teams. The Phillies have better hitters than Diamondbacks, but their pitching just isn't there. We faced their best pitcher, Nola. But I... um. The two positive things we could take away is the last game. Cronenworth getting out of his funk and Clevenger pitching well. Yep. So should we talk about Clevenger now or talk about next week first? Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's do the next week last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Mike Clevenger. Yeah. There was a little controversy. A controversy. Yes. The Arizona Diamondbacks have a man on their broadcast team that to say <laughs> is a dingus. That's not even a, that's too nice of a word for him. But this is a family friendly show. So <laughs> dingus works. Uh, Bob Brindley is his name. Former baseball player. Also former Diamondbacks manager had said a few things that have been really bad against Clevenger and also has had it out for the Padres for 20 years. And I'm not even making that number up. Nope. So do you want to explain what happened this week? Yeah, I can. It's, it's a little weird. It's so this, like I said, this is a 20 years thing. Uh, so Bob Renly um, effectively started in last when we played the Diamondbacks last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, brought up and the, his brought up the fact that like Mike Clevenger went to the school that was like very uh, um, preppy, uh, preppy, preppy and formalized, and they're like that's surprising. He he went to that school, and then started like bringing up the fact that he wasn't a great student and he was like sent to his dorm to be like I I did not go to a dormitory college so I don't know what the term was but basically if you just you're forced to stay in your dorm room right because he was breaking breaking codes. school rules he kept bringing it up and I guess Mike heard that and was none too pleased uh, and basically said and then today and says or yesterday, depending on when you listen to the podcast, uh, they were bringing up that how he's so slow and how they're going to miss their flight. Um, the Diamondbacks announced they're saying they're going to miss their flight if Mike Clevenger is pitching. And Mike heard that, I guess, in the clubhouse or whatever. And like after the game, called them out on it and said, you know, I don't like it when people don't know who I am and they make assumptions about me. And, you know, why don't you come on down to the clubhouse and see how we really are? Which sounds like to me they're going to beat him up. <laughs> and you know what? Right. That sounds bad. Right. But deserved. Um, because this yeah. isn't the first time Bob Brunley has bashed the Padres. No. Earlier this season, like the first series of the year, he was calling Jerickson Profar out for being a dirty player yep. because he thought his slide was aggressive. And two years ago, in 2020, the Padres in one game hit six home runs off the Diamondbacks in the first three innings. And Bob Brenly said on the broadcast, if if he was still managing, one of those player, da, Padres would end up on his back. And his fellow broadcaster was like, are you saying you would hit somebody? He goes, yeah, we're not throwing batting practice. But no, you your team was throwing batting practice. Right. We hit six home runs in three <laughs> innings. Yeah, called Tati a thug because of 
how much jewelry he was wearing. Called Manny Machado, dirty player, based on a play as well. Yeah, he doesn't like the Padres. And do you want to enlighten the folks like how deep the rabbit hole goes? So in 2002, and in case you children are out there, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> all right? Hmm. The Padres were facing the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks had a pitcher named Kurt Schilling, who was a good pitcher. <laughs> One of the best pitchers of his era. Yeah. He was throwing a perfect game against the Padres in at Arizona, and the Padres had a catcher at the time named Ben Davis. What Ben Davis is doing now, I don't know. But he is a hero for me at this point. <laughs> ben Davis gets up there, and he was and it was the eighth inning. He was one out already. And he noticed they were playing him back. All the infielders were back. So he decided. Also, uh, well, I'll stop you. It's also 2 nothing. Yes. It's a close game. Very close game. Our, I can't remember who was pitching for us, but he only given up like three hits. One of them was a two-run homer. So it was a very close game. Ben Davis decided, I'm going to get on base. So he dropped a bunt. <laughs> And because all of the infielders were playing deep, they couldn't get to him. This was a 6'5 catcher. Even though he was 6'5, he still wasn't fast, but he still beat out the butt. Bob Brenly has a conniption and starts yelling and screaming at his bullpen at Bruce Bochy. And they're yelling back and forth. And at the end of that... Bob Brenly that, that that night went on a press conference. It's the dirtiest thing I've ever seen. You don't bunt when someone's throwing a perfect game. Ben Davis will um, regret the day that he did that. We're going to put him on his back next time we see him. All this stuff. Just like, and the next time we faced the Diamondbacks and Ben Davis came up, they indeed threw at him. Ben Davis got out of the way. The next pitch, Ben Davis put it in the outfield and hit a home run. And that's baseball. And that's baseball. <laughs> and he sort of gave a little wave at Bob Brenly when he ran by, which made Bob Brenly go on another tirade about how immature yeah. Ben Davis is. You don't pimp a home run. Yeah. So since that day has come, since that Bob Brenly has had it out for the Padres. Yeah. Well, he's also had it out for anybody. He's, he's, He's Contankerous a real, old man. Yeah, he's 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 one of those people that you go, oh, we can't wait for that generation to die off. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! Just, just uh, he's so yeah, and he he is everything that's wrong with old school baseball. Yes, yeah, like it's amazing to me that Buck Showalter and Bob Brenly are the same generation. Yes, because they're both. Like demonstrably different ways of managing the game, and just you know the same exact generation. Even Dusty Baker, like those are all guys that did not like. There's a way to do this that's not hyper violent and like petty and just you move on from things. And also, they've learned with the game, right? What was acceptable 40 years ago, yeah, is not acceptable now. A player wearing a chain, admiring a home run, is not a is. Everybody does that these days. Right. It might have been unacceptable back then, even though there were plenty of ball players yeah. that did it back then. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever people say, like, no one pimped home runs in the 90s, like, what are you talking about? Like, the whole 98 home run chase was like, how many times did we see Sosa jump up and down? How many times did we see Mark McGuire just stand there and watch? Like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> Ken Griffey, like, my goodness. Like, yeah, even in the eighties, Steve yeah. Garvey was famous for pimping his home runs. Yeah, yeah, like it. This is not an unknown thing, <laughs> right? Right. And so that, that so that's what happened. And Bob Brenly fueled Mike Clevenger, and Mike yeah. Clevenger was like, "All right, I'm just going to be better now." And good for him, really. Yeah. I don't want him to say more mean things, but Bob, if you have to say mean things, yes. Say it during Clevenger games, so it helps inspire him. Yes, exactly. Um, and just just so you know that we're not not talking out of whatever. Like 
NBC Sports has an article um, where they interviewed Bob Brenly 10 years after the Ben Davis event, and he's still mad then. Like, so, like, this is, James, you're not out of, you're 100% right. He's a very, he holds on to stuff for a long time. Yeah, it, it's, it's wild, man. Yeah, it was 10 years ago he talked about it was the, the mo- worst thing he's ever seen in baseball. Yeah, well, I can name at least two other things that were. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but you know, Bob that was Bradley. Bob. Br- and the thing is, like, we aren't the only people that have problems. Bob Brenly's does it with other players. Oh yeah, once he's out, once he has it out for you, he doesn't really let up. Yeah, and that's he took a sabbatical last year for some not too hidden racist comments, right? Yeah, I, I just it's odd that he still has a job. But maybe maybe it's a, maybe maybe they have a hiring problem too in as announcers. I don't think so, but they might. They might. <laughs> Actually, I think Bob Brunley might own a piece of the team. That's probably true. And he, he always will bring out the fact, you know, I did win you guys a World Series. It's like, oh yes. shoot, that's right. Well, so that brings us to our last topic. Yes. How can the Padres get better, Joseph? Yeah. I mean, this last week was awful to watch. I was yes. at the game on Sunday, and it was just... Bullpen disasters are awful to watch. And inconsistent offense is awful to watch. And those are the two things that need to change. Really, I mean, I think it's... We need to have a lineup that can hit home runs more, that can drive for power, and hit consistently. And without Manny Machado, Tatis, and Grisham not doing well, and Cronenworth slumping, it's not a good offense. No, not at all. Luke Voigt has hit the biggest fly balls I've ever seen in my life that get caught in the warning track. So that will be figured out, I think. But you have a first baseman who um, is unathletic, not a good fielder. Oh, and he also doesn't slug. So I'm glad he's around. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> really good in the lineup to see, oh, this guy who's who's a negative in almost every part of the game. It was very telling at the end of this, the last two innings. Yes. They substitute Eric Hosmer as a defensive substitute. Bob Melvin said, oh, I just want to give Alcantara time to, he's a good defender. And I'm like, no, he didn't. You saw that play yesterday. And you, you, you knew, you could probably say, Bob Melvin knew that it was partially his, his decision that lost the game. He's a manager. He'll, he'll be fine with that. He'll live with it. That's his job. But he also knows one of my players took, took the game from us by not making a smart play. And if you're making twenty some odd million dollars a year, you should be making a smart play. Yes. And he just didn't. Uh, so we need more production. And you know, if if that means making an upgrade in catcher, if that means a better outfielder, we need to have that happen because there's no way this team, that team we saw this week. Uh, is going to go anywhere. Um, even with Tatis and Machado in a playoff setting, I don't think it's a good. I, you really need another impact bat to make that substantial. And maybe the solution is you trade away Hosmer and you upgrade first base. You know, you bundle Snell and Hosmer, a prospect, to get a first baseman. Because there's not, we don't hit home runs. That's a big problem, right? We just don't. We're not a power threat. We don't slug. So there's no fear in our lineup apart from Machado and Tatis and Voight, you know? But they're incons- inconsistent. So that, like, if we do one thing this year, it has to be to upgrade the offense. Either that's via by 
get rid of somebody in replacement, or we start adding the outfield and start benching people more. You know? Yeah. Because it's just, I, I can't, if I watch another Trent Grisham, like, pop up in a clutch situation or another Eric Hosmer ground out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak out. I'm going to have a bad time because those are two positions we can't upgrade. Yes, they are. You know, uh, and I love Trent, you know, but he's just obviously he's not with it offensively. But going forward, this needs to be on our agenda to fix because it's we're going to have games like we're going to have weeks like last week and we're going to have to have the kind of acumen and uh, talent to overcome it. Because we're going to have, even though our pitching has been stellar, there's going to be days where our pitching will let us down. They yes. have they, a couple, they've done a couple times this year and this week, particularly a couple times. But if we had a better offense, that wouldn't make, we we'd still have a fighting chance. Yeah. Bullpen's an interesting problem. Steven Wilson's hurt. Suarez is hurt. Pierce is still not healthy yet. Drew Pomeranz isn't healthy. Jose Castillo are all guys that can help us. So our bullpen gets better just via IL replacement. Yes. Uh, it's still I I I still wonder if we need another like if we want to strength deepen the bullpen some more or not. But I I'm I think I'm okay not going for the bullpen but we just need a healthy bullpen like we need all of those guys or at least four of those guys when Tatis comes back to really make a run in August September into the playoffs otherwise like that, that's going to happen because Luis, Gar- Luis Garcia has good stuff but when he has no location it's just it's just it's awful like yeah. it's terrible to watch just absolutely atrocious yeah he is an 80 20 guy. 80% of the time, he's great. But that yep. 20%, it's painful. Yep. How do you think we should fix it, James? Any disagreements? Any hot takes? The problem is, I think bullpens, a lot of teams are going to be going after. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of teams that need help with a bullpen. And we do have some potentially really good bullpen help on the IL that all are coming back in July potentially I think I I, I think if Myers comes back Platoon Myers and um, uh, no more I'm okay with that but yeah center field Grisham needs to start producing because as of right now, Jose Alcantara is hitting better than him, and Jose Alcantara has no power, but at least he can get a single or two every game. Yeah. yeah. And he looks like he's just as good of a fielder. Yep. So I have no faith. I, Grisham is just... The thing is, like, we know Grisham can be good. Eric Hosmer has proven himself he can only be good the first month of the year. <laughs> and then he just forgets how to hit, and he thinks... And also forgets how to field. I think we're stuck with Eric Hosmer because nobody wants that contract. I I just it makes me so mad. Makes me mad that we keep talking about him. We have to. Beginning of the year, we thought he was doing better, but then you kept on saying, "Don't let this fool you." We've seen this. We've seen this particular movie before. So, yeah, I think the two positions we can really step up is center field and first base. Now, obviously, yeah, we could get a better hitting catcher in Wilson Contreras. But Jorge Alfaro is doing a pretty good job. Austin Nola got a couple hits today. They're just not power threats. And, I mean, not consistent power threats. Certainly not Nola. And I just, I don't know. I think, uh, I, I just, I, I, I think we're stuck with Hosmer. I, unless AJ can pull off some sort of 
miracle trade where we get somebody to replace him, I think we're stuck with Hosmer until his contract's over. I do not want to see H, uh, Eric Hosmer field a single inning in the playoffs. Oh, I agree because I I I I had that exact thought of if this is in the playoffs and he makes this kind of a play again, that that's it. We'll lose we'll lose a playoff game or series. I mean, in the in the wild card series against the Dodgers in 2020, he dropped a routine like a uh, ball that thrown to him by Jake Cronenworth. Like, yes. It, it just I if I see him start and he makes a play like that. I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I I cuz it's just it's one thing to be the fan that's like you hate this guy cuz you're cuz whatever reason cuz you have cuz the three games a year not I don't know why I'm making fun of people. I'll go three games a year, whatever. You know what I mean? You don't watch that often and then you see that, but the time you do watch this one guy super stinks. When the time you watch it and you're like, well, "That guy's horrible." When he's not really, you know, there's that kind of fan. But it's so objectively true that Eric Hosmer is just bad all the time. Well, no, let me let, not all let, the time. Let me let me try to let me. Yeah. Defensively, he's the worst defensive first baseman in, in starting first baseman in Major League Baseball. Cool, cool, okay, cool. He's got that going for him at least. <laughs> Offensively, he's in the middle of the pack of all hitters in baseball. That's not good enough for somebody making his money. Yeah. And it's I not know. like yeah. and it's not like when the Angels cut Pool Halls, they could have cut him two years prior, but he was a first bout Hall of Famer. You give that guy as many at bats you can because he sells tickets. Nobody's buying <laughs> Eric Hosmer's tickets. Uh, yeah, so we need an outfielder. We need an outfielder very badly, and we ran, ran through a couple last week. But the only good thing about this week, I think, is the Dodgers also seem to be sucking right now. Yep. Yep. And uh, because they also got beaten up by the Rockies, we're still only a game back of first base, first place. So that leads me to. The final topic, Joey. What do you think we're going to be doing? How do you think our record is going to go for next week? Four games against the Dodgers and two games against the Mariners. As Good. long as we don't hit Jesse Winker, we should be able to be fine with the Mariners. Let's start with the Dodgers. The Dodgers are out. They're starting pitching. We're going to miss Urias. Get Mitch White tomorrow. Gonsolin's having a great year. Anderson's having a fluky year. And then Kershaw on Sunday, is that right? Yeah. Kershaw versus Gore. Wow, crafty lefty season. Um, I think that if Manny comes out on Friday, comes back in the lineup tomorrow, Um, sorry, tomorrow being Thursday. I think that we win tomorrow against Mitch White. I think we beat Anderson on Saturday. Gonsolin and Kershaw are the, are the problem children. Potters and Dodgers have the same kind of issues currently. Inconsistent bullpen. Well, the Dodgers have no closer. Their closer is not. Craig Kimbrell is not doing have a good year. No. Very inconsistent. So if we keep the game close, we're always going to have a, a fighting chance at the end. With the exception of Gaza, none of their starters have been doing right. great. Kershaw's I, always a problem, but he's not doing great this year. We win the series if Jake Cronenworth is truly out of the slump. I agree. Jake Cronenworth loves to hit against the Dodgers. He has great numbers against the Dodgers. If he is not slumping, we will win this series. I think we lose. I think we lose the. I want to say we lose the Gonsolin game. Gonsolin just the cat lover has his ways, and I think his stuff is he's just having a great year, and he can go six, seven innings. I, I think 
yeah, if if as long as Cronenworth is doing well, we'll win this series three to four. Because I think that our hitters are are pitching just that much better. I really think that. I think our it, starting pitching definitely is better. Yeah. Um. So, I think you know it's now coming back Machado. I, I just think, and you know how Faro is going to be more present this this series. I feel good. I actually feel pretty good about it, but just it relies on Jake Cronenworth pitting because you just can't just have, because I, I'm not, I don't know how Manny's is going to do. I'm going to be, I, I don't know. Like, is he, you just spent 10 days off. Is he going to be that good of coming back? So I agree. Um, but yeah. So I say three or four of the Dodgers come an optimist. And I think we sweep the Mariners because I believe Julio Rodriguez and Jesse Winker have to serve their suspension during that time. That is true. I just, I was just thinking that when I said we shouldn't hit um, Winker, but he's not. We won't have to hit him. No Winker, no Julio Rodriguez, and no Ty France. That makes that lineup pretty easy to deal yeah. with. Um, but knowing knowing how it is, Adam Frazier probably gonna have a six home run game on Monday for some. Hasn't hit home run all year. But <laughs> he'll he'll revenge on the Padres. Yeah, I I, I I'm gonna say five and one again, which is just insane to say. But I feel like this is the team. That's how I expect going forward. Yes, and maybe this maybe my optimism is. Maybe this is assuming like how I think the team's going to be like with Tatis and all the bullpen pieces plus an outfit. But I, I, I think that we have a fighting shot to make it five and one if Cronenworth is feeling good. So I think you're right. Yeah. But because I, I, because you watched the, last week. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I, I lost so badly last week. I say we go six and L. Oh. Wow. Wow. I say we turn up for the Dodgers. We smack them around a bit. Okay. We send them into the ravine. Yeah, that's what I say. Wow. Don't think it'll come true, but that's what I want. And that's what I'm willing to happen. This will happen. I like it. I like that vibe. I really do. Yeah. James, we're on YouTube. Wait, wait, let me. Wait, don't, we forgot one thing, Joseph. What did we forget? Don't forget, everybody. Have fun celebrating this weekend. I mean, everyone's going to be barbecuing, you know, Bobby Bonilla Day. What, what's this weekend? Oh, Bobby, July 4th on Monday. Day. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about the birth of our nation. Yeah, I'll, everyone go have a barbecue, watch the children's specials. Children's specials? You, would, you know that song, you know, with his hard hat and his baseball bat. He can hit home runs all day. Bobby Bonilla, you know it. Oh, it's Bobby Bonilla Day. Yeah, it's Bobby Bonilla Day. That's right. You for a second I thought you had this like intricate philosophy around July fourth, which you can I guess. Bobby Bonilla, July first, the only holiday worth celebrating in July. That's right. As listeners may or may not know, James and I had collect Bobby Bonilla cards. <laughs> Why? Because it's fun. <laughs> because it's fun, and we just turned out. We went through all of our baseball cards we've had for our lives, and we just have a lot of them. So we have lots like, of Bobby Bonilla cards. Let's just keep them all. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys uh, want to give us Bobby Bonilla cards, shoot me an email. I'll, yeah, I'll we don't it. have any Bobby Bonilla in a Royals uniform. That's true. It's also strange he, for a guy that's like so financially savvy and got such a big contract, he was traded a lot. He was. He was not on one team for a long. But it was. It was. I find that a little odd. Yes. Whatever. But, but celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day, and then also Fourth of July to you. Yeah. Okay, James. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. Thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate it. And until next time, go Padres. Go Padres.